Chcesz zdobyć najlepsze gry za grosze? Wejdź na rollcase.eu. Darmowa skrzynka na start. Codzienne loterie i giveawaye. 10% od każdego poleconego. Wbijaj lewele i wykonuj misję. Świeży i konkurencyjny drop. rollcase.eu. Link w opisie. Koronawirus i światowa epidemia to działanie celowe? Pojawiają się kolejne teorie, raporty i szokujące informacje. Tymczasem Iran mówi jasno, koronawirus to broń biologiczna i podaje czyją sprawką jest pandemia. Koronawirus zaczął się od targów Wuhan w Chinach, gdzie jedzone są koale, szczenięta i wilki. Szybko pojawiły się doniesienia o tamtejszym tajnym laboratorium, w którym bada się najgroźniejsze choroby świata. Od lat ostrzegano, że obiekt nie spełnia wymogów bezpieczeństwa. Pewien agent wywiadu ujawnił nawet raport, w którym wskazano, że koronawirus to broń biologiczna, a jego teorie rozpowszechniły media takie jak Washington Post. Pojawiają się również niepotwierdzone doniesienia, że rząd Chin pozbył się osób ostrzegających przed epidemią, a nawet mógł celowo pozwolić na jej rozwój. Warto jednak wspomnieć, że nawet polski wiceminister zdrowia podejrzewa, że SARS-CoV-2 to wirus zmodyfikowany genetycznie i spełniający cechy broni biologicznej. Nie ma jednak ostatecznych dowodów na tę teorię. Ale po zobaczeniu tego nagrania może zmienić zdanie na temat wirusa. Zapraszam do oglądania. What happened here, Alex? is that the uh, uh, Wuhan scientists took the North Carolina uh, SARS uh, with gain of function, which is already a biological warfare weapon, and they took the technology here behind this well-developed SARS HIV weapon, uh, weapon and they, they all brought it back to the Wuhan uh, BSL-4 and tried to DNA genetically uh, engineer it into a, into a chimera, into a, a, a biological warfare weapon uh, involving uh, the coronavirus, uh, the HIV virus, and gain of function. So, and I think uh, so it's all clear in the papers. They admit they did this. You've reverse engineered it, an incredible job. Do you think it was done on purpose then? Who stands to gain? Key Bono, as a, as a law, law professor, Who's, who would do this? Who stands to gain? All right. I have not touched the coronavirus today because I was waiting for Professor Dr. Francis A. Boyle to come on, leading American expert in international law, responsible for drafting the Biological Weapons Anti-Terrorism Act of 89. It was adopted into world law, the American implementing legislation for the Biological Weapons Convention. He served the board of directors of Amnesty International and represented Bosnia and Herzegovina to world court. He served as a legal advisor to Palestinian delegation of Middle East peace negotiations. 2007, he delivered the Bertrand Russell Peace Lectures. Professor Boyle teaches international law at the University of Illinois and is author of, and he goes through all of the different books he's written. He holds a doctor of law, magna cum laude, as well as a PhD in political science from Harvard University. His latest book is Poems Against the Empire, which is a collection of poetic reflections on his experiences fighting for peace, justice, human rights, international law, social welfare, and the United States Constitution. And he joins us now. I would call him a classical liberal. Uh, a liberal today, or leftist, is a fascist. Just like a neocon is a fascist. And so the terms don't mean anything. And he's got big, breaking, exclusive news here. And he sent me notes. But I think the best way to do this is for at least the next three segments he pretty much host so that he can walk you through this. Um, but this is serious news. This is very important news. Everybody should pay attention to the Wuhan coronavirus came out of the biowarfare lab. That's even being said by the White House now. Dr. Boyle and others were saying it three weeks ago. The UNC lab should be shut down. Everyone investigated for violating Biological Weapons Anti-Terrorism Act. Uh, I'm just going to, he's got major studies that have just come out. So he, he's an expert on bioweapons and the law. So we've got eight minutes to break here, then a nine-minute segment, a ten-minute segment. Um, I'll take us into break, Dr. Boyle, but you go ahead and host. You've got the, the floor here. Thanks for joining us. Well, Alex, uh, thank you very much for having me on. My best to your viewing uh, audience. Yes, I sent your uh, assistant an uh, email on 
Monday that I had uh, revised my opinion on certain matters and also I had come up with what I concluded were the smoking guns that the Wuhan uh, coronavirus came out of that BSL-4 uh, facility. And you'll note now that <clears throat> uh, Senator Cotton saying the same thing. He was uh, behind me at uh, Harvard Law School. And despite that, the uh, New York Times slimed him. At, and as you know, Senator Cotton is uh, uh, a uh, decorated combat uh, veteran. No surprise there from the New York Times. So, yes, I have these scientific studies now. Basically, I, I read these things over the weekend, which is why uh, I uh, uh, changed my mind and said I had new information uh, and uh, alerted your assistant on uh, Monday. And today is the first day I could give you uh, an extensive interview. I want to go through these scientific studies so that you and the viewing audience understand their implications. I believe they are the smoking gun of what happened here. Uh, the first is by uh, some uh, life scientists, uh, three from Marseille, France, and one from uh, Montreal, uh, clinical research laboratories there. Uh, it was uh, published on antiviral research, 10 February, 2020. Okay, and I I had a chance to read it over the weekend. I, you know, I read these types of things over the weekend. Now, uh, I'm not going to go through this whole study, but they did a genetic analysis of the uh, Wuhan coronavirus, and let me just conclude. Uh, the critical part here, where it says, quote, and may provide a gain of function to the 2019 NCOV for efficient, efficient spreading in the human population compared to other beta coronaviruses. Let me repeat that, quote, may provide a gain of function to the 2019 NCOV now, for efficient spreading in the human population compared to other coronaviruses. So, uh, Alex, you recall in the first interview I gave to your uh, colleague, uh, Mr. Schroyer, and then the follow-up interviews I gave to you, I stated that this was clearly a, a gain of function, uh, offensive biological warfare, uh, you said that three weeks ago, you said that two weeks ago, and now it's not just a big Indian Institute. Now more life scientists have scanned it. They're saying exactly what you were saying. Right. Well, this article here is the smoking gun. Okay. It, it clearly... And again, these, tell people again the article and how they find it. Uh, well, you can... I got it on uh, <clears throat> Science Direct. Antiviral Research, 10 February 2020. Antiviral uh, research. Uh, 10 February, 2020. And, and it's a long title, but it starts out, the spike glycoprotein of the new coronavirus contains a furin-like cleavage site absent in the COV of the same So clade. that's exactly what the prestigious Indian, this prestigious Indian, excuse me, the, the prestigious Indian Institute said is that it has the, the, the points where the artificial RNA was injected. I mean, they can see right where it happened. Right, but th this was a, a, a genetic, that, as you know, that was withdrawn under political pressure. But now we have uh, uh, four very distinguished life scientists here. Uh, yeah, that's it right there. Uh, and the uh, uh, smoking gun here is on uh, page 11, near the uh, bottom, the last full uh, paragraph from the bottom where it says, may provide a gain of function to the coronavirus for efficient spreading in the human population. So explain what to... that gain of function means, because not all of us are experts on this like you, Doctor. Right, well, gain of function, now, what, oh, so let me repeat, uh, 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 Alex, as I've told you before, gain of function technology is DNA genetic engineering of uh, dangerous biological warfare 
uh, substances to begin with. It's like the souping up of, of already bad pathogens. Right. It's a, it's a turbocharging. And gain-of-function work can only be done safely in a BSL-4 or a BSL-3 facility. So I think clearly this is the smoking gun that the Wuhan coronavirus came out of that BSL-4 uh, facilities. Now, so does this mirror what the Indian Institute said, or is this different? Well, I, I think it goes beyond what the Indian uh, study said, but we'll, we'll get to that in a minute, the, the Indian study. Okay, so <clears throat> I think, you know, I've now, excuse me, provided the uh, smoking gun here. This is clearly uh, a weaponized biological warfare agent and there is no legitimate scientific or medical use for gain of function technology, DNA technology on biowarfare agents. So there's no it excuse is, that it's a vaccine test that got out. That's baloney. This is clearly an offensive biological warfare agent, and it has no uh, legitimate uh, 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 medical or uh, other other purposes. This is beyond I'm sensational. Is that, is that why we're seeing the very serious response to it? Well, <laughs> you know, Alex, we, we first discussed this over uh, uh, three weeks ago, and they're still uh, attacking me for being a conspiracy theorist and fake news, and uh, I'm a nutcase and a nut job and everything else. So there's been a massive fight back in the uh, all the mainstream news media uh, against this. And indeed, as I told you before, I've been completely censored out of all the uh, mainstream news media here in the United States. But everything America. you said has been confirmed, and now a major scientific groups come out and confirmed it. Let's get back to that smoking gun and recap that and get to all the other documentation straight ahead. Well, we have a leading expert in international law who's led major delegations for the U.S. government, expert uh, in biological weapons, anti-terrorism, responsible for drafting the Biological Weapons and Terrorism Act that then got adopted as world law, Dr. Francis Boyle here. And I'm reading the same studies he's reading. So more scientists come out and look at it and say, this thing is man-made, and then they show how, and they say it's conclusive. You notice major Indian institutes came out and said the same thing three weeks ago. And so we're gonna walk through more of these studies in this segment. Next segment, just as a father, as a citizen, as a human, uh, as a citizen of the planet Earth, I'm gonna ask Dr. Boyle what he really thinks the end game in, is here. Was this accidentally released as, as we were hoping and that, that that's bad enough or is it something even more sinister? Are they using this as the excuse to invade Taiwan as they're now doing? Uh, Dr. Boyle, please continue uh, with the studies. Uh, the spike of, and then we have the whole breakdown here with the study. All right, well, now let me get to the uh, second study, which is another smoking gun and a bombshell, Alex. There's no other word for it. You remember in our previous interview, you asked me if this had come out of the BSL-4 facility in Winnipeg, Canada, was stolen out of there. I said that that could have happened. Uh, Winnipeg is our equivalent of Fort Detrick. They do every type of hideous uh, offensive Nazi-type biological warfare work uh, up there you can possibly imagine. But again, on the basis of uh, materials, scientific materials I had a chance to read uh, over the weekend, I have changed my opinion on that. I think I have the definitive evidence where this came from, and it came from the uh, BSL-3 bio warfare lab at the University of North Carolina. Now, I have condemned them before because they have done gain of function work, DNA genetic engineering uh, on every hideous biological warfare uh, agent you can imagine, including uh, uh, Mer MERS at that time, Middle East uh, Respiratory Syndrome, uh, agent, which again is a, a bio uh, uh coronavirus. Now, it just came to my attention. Say that again, because we're going to pull this up as you speak. You said the other study, we, we, we pulled it up. Uh, study I 
them was their uh, uh, gain of function DNA genetic engineering on MERS, which is Middle East Respiratory and System. And that was the University of North Carolina. Right. Uh, they have a BSL-3 biowarfare lab there. Oh, well, that's something now, I keep reading, that they do level four stuff at level threes, right? I think they are, but they're doing it with the level three. The last I saw, that's all they had. But let me go through this study. Um, it's entitled, A SARS-like cluster of circulating back coronaviruses so shows potential for human emergence. So say it uh, again, because we have radio listeners, uh, hundreds of stations, a SARS-like cluster, the name of the paper, a SARS-like cluster. A SARS-like cluster of circulating back coronaviruses, coronaviruses shows potential for human emergence. In and that's other words- 2000 and That's 2015, December 21st, that, we have it on screen. That is correct, it, in uh, NatMed, that's it. Now, if you look through this carefully, First, notice who was involved in this DNA genetic engineering of SARS, which is already a biological warfare agent, to give it gain-of-function activities. And it has all these people there uh, from the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. It has someone from the Food and Drug Administration. So you can't trust the Food and Drug Administration. And then at the very bottom of the list, uh, who is involved? Uh, Zheng Li Li Shi, key laboratory of special pathogens and biosafety, Wuhan Institute of Virology, Chinese Academy of Sciences, Wuhan, China. So it's very clear to me that this a uh, uh, scientist from the Wuhan Institute of Virology uh, got this gain of function technology for SARS from this University of North Carolina lab. And he didn't steal it, or he or she didn't steal it. What happened was, uh, if you read carefully to the um, end of the article acknowledgments, uh, they acknowledge a National Natural Science Foundation of China award. So, in other words, the Chinese government paid them to have one of their top uh, biological warfare experts involved in this type of... Uh, By the uh, way, Dr. Boyle, stay, stay right there. Sure. I'm reading the paper. I mean, I know you had big news. You sent us links, but I'm just now reading it. And you talk about smoking gun. This is the Chinese government paying for the exact same thing with a U.S. lab. How did you discover this? How This is smoking gun. How the hell did you find this? Well, Alex, I, I told you that it, it's part of my professional responsibilities to stay on top of biological warfare. So uh, I came across it and in, in my research. That's just part of the job. Well, look, 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 you're explaining it very well, sir. But just dumb it down. And we got we're gonna our next guest is great. But we're gonna move into tomorrow. This is too big, and now you you've got time. So dumb it down, right. everybody. Why these two papers are so smoking gun? Because I'm sitting there. Oh, yeah. Look at this. This is incredible. This is I unbelievable. Have more, I have more than that. Um, oh, but I know. Notice they acknowledge National Natural Science Foundation of China War. So in other words, these death scientists at the University of North Carolina took dirty money from China to allow that one of their top uh, bio warfare experts from this Wuhan Institute of Virology in Wuhan, which has the BSL-4 facility, they knew exactly what they were doing. And they permitted this Chinese scientist to work with them to give gain of function a uh, uh, bio warfare DNA genetic capability to SARS, which is dangerous enough uh, to begin with. And let me just go through uh, some of the language here. It, it, it is truly a, a smoking gun. Uh, clearly that laboratory must be shut down immediately. Uh, and uh, all those uh, scientists investigated by the United States government uh, for this and their responsibility here 
and uh, for violating my Biological Weapons Anti-Terrorism Act of 1989. But let me continue. This is what they said. We built a chimeric virus that encodes a novel zoonotic spike protein in the context of viable uh, SARS. Uh, this approach characterized the threat posed by uh, corona SARS coronavirus spike. Dr. Boyle, in stay there. We got to go to break. This is so okay. bombshell. I'm reading the paper right here. They are admitting that they built the very virus that China paid the U.S. to build, and now it's been released. And why did they release it so Xi Jinping could grab power and invade Taiwan? Wow. This is unbelievable. No matter what you've ever heard on this show, this is the craziest and the most documented. This is over the top, and we've caught them red-handed. Unbelievable. We'll be right back. Tell everybody you know, tune in right now. This is unbelievable. So I don't want to get metaphysical here, but my dad is a retired oral surgeon and dentist, and he's also developed some drugs that got approved with the Pentagon and done some other things. And he's got an office over here, and he works here part-time. And there was something about today's show with Dr. Boyle coming on. I said, you know, my dad's got that skull from medical school. That's a real skull. And one of my earliest memories of being like two, three years old, and, you know, the skull's in a black box. And I, like, toddle over and open it up and, like, drop it on the floor. And the German shepherd ran out in the backyard with it. My dad got real pissed off. He said, that's important. You need to respect that. That's a real skull. So one of my earliest memories is a German shepherd running out in the backyard with this skull. But it's just funny. I thought today's show, I even know why. I just went and said, Dad, can I put your skull on air? Because he's got it in the office over there. He said, yeah, just, you know, respect the skull and everything. Is my... but, but the point is, is that, this is real. Something big's going on. And now I'm looking at all these prestigious reports going back five years ago, how they engineered this. And Dr. Francis Boyle wrote the U.S. biological, you know, weapons law. And he's here laying this out. And I can read the reports. It's ridiculous how obvious this is that the Chinese paid a U.S. university. That's all over the news, Yale and Harvard are in trouble for 300 and something million, but it turns out it's billions total. That's Wall Street Journal, New York Times, for Chinese communist funding. So for whatever reason, we're better at science than they are, and they're getting us to finance and build their surveillance grid, all of it. So for whatever archetypal reason today, I'm like, I want a skull on the show today. I might have showed this skull in 20 something years on air once or twice. And why did I go get the skull? I just thought like today I should like do that to point out that we're all human. And it's like Macbeth, you know, sitting there when they dig up his old teacher and he's talking to the skull. So that's all in the middle of this. Uh, Dr. Boyle, please go back to where you were before we went to break and how big this is and what's breaking here and the double smoking guns here and even more you've got of where this came from because that'll give us the answer hopefully of where it's going right well to continue then it says uh, this approach characterized the threat posed uh by a spike in primary human airways so in other words they're designing this to infect human beings by their airways and then it says in vivo so, in other words, they are using live animals. Slow down and start over. We're, we're, again, give them the paper's name again. This is, this is so huge. They're making it to infect people. You're right. They should be arrested. Of course, they should be prosecuted. No question at all about it. That's the, uh, I think, the one you already had up there. But in any, I'm going to stop interrupting. Just recap what you just said. Walk through this again. Right. We built a chimeric virus. So they joined these different biological warfare agents together into a chimera. As I told you, swine flu As was As you said a, three weeks ago, it's a chimera. Chimera, right. Um, and here they are doing it to have a, quote, spike in primary human airway cells in vivo. That's surrogates with for us, okay? Jesus. Now, if you, if you continue here, they took uh, mice, uh, and they, uh, with their technique here, found robust replication comparable to SARS. Wonderful. Uh, 
So they're trying. They're using the gain of function technology. They're, they're testing it to make sure it spreads quickly. That's right. And 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 it's not just SARS. It's gain of function. Uh, together, the data confirm the ability to infect human airway cells, uh, et cetera. So God. they know exactly what they are doing here. Uh, so you, I mean, just like Ford makes F-150 trucks, you just found who made this, and they're openly bragging about it. Right. Let me re continue. Together, the data indicate that viruses using, uh, utilizing what they uh, put together are capable of inducing considerable disease in mice in the context of uh, basically SARS. Wow. Wow. Um, and again, SARS is the same coronavirus family. Right. It's weaponized coronavirus. They also conclude that uh, they really couldn't find uh, an antibody uh, against it. Wow. And so it's extremely dangerous. Um, total, total jerks. So let me continue then. Um, uh, with I'm statement. just starting to ask, you know, well, these people better be arrested really quick. Right. Now, let me uh, uh, continue here where they say um, their new DNA genetically engineered uh, virus constitutes a gain in pathogenesis. That's gain of function right there, they admit it. Pathogenesis means lethality uh, and uh, infectiousness. And we know that even Lancet has said lethality is about 15%. If you disaggregate numbers even put out by the uh, Chinese government, it's about 17%. Uh, percent. So um, together these data and represent a crossroads of gain of function research concern, concerns. Um, and, and they just make it clear they are going to continue anyway. Uh, they also point out that uh, they involve HIV-based pseudovirus uh, prepared as previously described. Which is what uh, the Indian found. Oh, my God. That is a, that's why I was going to get to that. Yes, uh, HIV <laughs> is up in there. This and is ridiculous. No, no. This is the type of Nazi bio-warfare work these scientists do, Alex. Well, uh, no, they, I agree, but they're publishing it. Uh, they're admitting they did it. And let me continue, Alice, in a, Alex, in a footnote, it says, uh, cells were originally obtained from Fort Detrick. That's oh our bio-warfare. So that means U.S. government bio-warfare was running this. They were involved in it, too. Yes. Jesus. Uh, well, so let me ask you this. When you learned this this weekend, what was it like? Was your heart beating faster? No, I, I decided to uh, you know, notify your assistant there Monday morning, and then uh, later that morning, uh, CNN in uh, India uh, uh, did an interview with me on this, but that was only for about 20 minutes, and then I had to go back to my teaching. 